Happy DNA Day! My name is Lisa Klein Ransom and I am the author of Germs, Fact and Fiction, Friends and Foes, illustrated by my husband, James Ransom. Aside from being an author, I'm also a mother to four wonderful children who once upon a time would forget to wash their hands. So I wrote this book to remind them how bacteria, good and bad, impacts our lives, our bodies, and our world. So now, I'd like to read to you from Germs. Germs, Fact and Fiction, Friends and Foes. A long time ago, before your parents existed, and their parents too, before computers and TV, we were born. We roamed the earth with dinosaurs, Later, we stood at the foot of pyramids and sailed the oceans with Christopher Columbus. The first Thanksgiving? You guessed it, we were there. Let me introduce myself. I was born Salmonella, but only my mom calls me that. My friends call me Sam. I come from a large extended family of a billion or so germs, each of us so tiny a thousand could spread out on the tip of a pencil and you'd still never spot us. We roam from one end of the world to the other. I have uncles in Europe, aunts in Australia, a sister in South America. Family reunions are tough. We can never get together at the same time. As a hard-working family, we spend our days going places many wouldn't dare. Between toes, in armpits, around gums and teeth, and inside your ears. It may not always be pretty, but for us, it's home. Our names can get confusing. We're more often called E. coli, Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, yeast, and mold, but you can call us germs. We were once a powerful dynasty, ruling over everyone we met. We kept ourselves busy, but no one even knew we existed. That is until 1673, when a Dutch amateur scientist named Antony van Leeuwenhoek found us through his simple microscope. Our lives were changed forever. Now the entire world could see us. But it was another scientist, Louis Pasteur from France, who named us and made us famous. It's hard to believe people once thought unhealthy blood and evil spirits caused illnesses. Pasteur changed what people believed when he proved that germs were responsible for causing milk to sour, noses to run, and stomachs to ache. He and other scientists revealed our part in causing ear infections, cavities, chickenpox, pimples, and bad breath. That's when war broke out. Throughout the world, members of my family were heated until they vanished, injected through needles, never to be heard from again. And healed quickly with medicine. Pasteurization, vaccinations, and penicillin, we called these poison. Entire portions of my family were destroyed. But all anyone seemed to care about was the number of human lives being saved. We've survived, but it hasn't been easy. There was once a time we could depend on people not brushing their teeth or washing their hands. An entire population of us could live under just one dirty fingernail. Over the years, things have changed. Hand washing, bleach, rubber gloves, antibacterial this and antibacterial that, and even face masks. Just surviving the day has become a full-time job. Should we love to travel? We often ride piggyback on fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes, or as passengers in taxis, trains, buses, and boats all over the world. One good cough, and we sail through the air. Don't get the wrong idea about us. We germs are not all horrible creatures just spreading disease and causing a stink. There are really only a few relatives, distant cousins on my father's side, that cause problems and make the rest of us look bad. There was a time when bad germs built their reputations on fear. 
They were given colorful names like yellow fever, black death, and scarlet fever. Bad germs make it hard for people to remember all the good that many of us do. But good germs help in ways you wouldn't believe. We just don't go around bragging about it. For example, all those leaves that hang around in the fall, no matter how many times you rake, we're the cleanup crew. We settle on the dead leaves, then get to work, breaking them down by taking what we need and leaving your lawn packed with nutrients to grow grass and other plants in the spring. How about that funny sound you sometimes hear in your belly when you're hungry? It's not your stomach growling. It's us germs breaking down the food. It can get a little noisy at times, but we're hard at work helping you digest the spaghetti and meatballs you just ate. And the good germ chefs of the family help to create some of the world's finest foods. Yeast makes pizza dough, mold makes cheese sticks, and bacteria make the yogurt you pack in your lunches. Just so you know, we're not going anywhere anytime soon. We'll stick around for as long as you do. So remember, the next time you sneeze or get a tickle in your throat, think of us working around the clock, fighting, defending, infecting, multiplying for you, for us, forever. Influenza, acidophilus, fungi, virus, bug, just call us germs. Thanks for joining me today. And please, please, don't forget to wash your hands.